These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm. Or you can just use the link in the info box. Thank you. So the problem is to assign a half reaction to each beaker and show the direction of electron flow and salt flow? Yeah. All right. Well, what, uh, all right. Assign a half reaction to each beaker and show the direction of electron flow and salt flow. What reaction is occurring at the anode? Oxidation or reduction? Oxidation. And at the cathode? Reduction. How do you know? Um. Oh, I mean, cations yeah. flow to cathode and anions flow to anode. That is true. That is a true statement. That's not how we know that this is oxidation and this is reduction. So you were right. Maybe my question was a little bit mean. The answer is that we just memorized yeah. that anodes are for oxidation and cathodes are for reduction. The reason I ask, though, is anodes are always where oxidation happens, and cathodes are always where reduction happens. So you don't have to figure it out. You always know it. Maybe Have you heard the mnemonic and ox, red cat? Yeah. That's a really useful mnemonic for me. So this mnemonic always works. And ox, red cat. Anode is where oxidation takes place. Reduction is the cathode. So you were right about where the oxidation and the reduction were taking place. Do you know what this is supposed to represent in this problem? The voltage. Is it the voltage that's flowing or an outside voltage? That's flowing. OK, good. So there's no outside power source. Mm -hmm. This is just the voltage of the electrons that are flowing between these two places. OK. All right, so since there's no outside power source here, we have to set this reaction up so that it wants to go. Mm -hmm. It has to, because there's nothing here to help it. So it has to want to go. So we have to put who wants to be oxidized here and who wants to be reduced over here. Well, for that, we have to interpret these numbers over here. Uh, so um, what types of reactions do we have happening here? Reduction or oxidation? Is this a reduction or an oxidation, this first reaction? Reduction. That's right. And how do you know? Because it's gaining electrons. That's right. And there's another good uh, animal mnemonic there that maybe you've heard. That's good, except I like this better. Leo the lion goes grr. Loss of electrons is oxidation. Gain of electrons is reduction. That's better than oil rig, because oil rig doesn't tell you what you're losing or what you're gaining. It just says oxidation is loss and reduction is gain. But this tells us loss of electrons is oxidation, and gain of electrons is reduction. OK, and I like it also because it's another animal mnemonic to go with anox red cat. All right, so anyway, uh, what did we decide? This is a reduction, right? So this must be a reduction potential. If they give you a number next to a reduction, um, that's the reduction potential. Uh, generally speaking, you're more likely to see reduction potentials than oxidation potentials anyway. So how about this reaction? Is it an oxidation or a reduction? Right now it's a reduction. That's right. So this must also be a reduction potential. All right. Now, when potentials here are positive, does that mean the reaction um, is favored or disfavored? Does a positive potential mean that it's favored or disfavored? Favored. Favored. That basically has to be memorized. Positive E means that you're favored. It's a little confusing because um, you guys have learned about delta G this semester, right? When a reaction is favored, does it have a positive delta G or a negative delta G? Negative. All right, so it's important not to get these two things confused. A favored reaction is a positive E and a negative delta G. So which of these two reactions is favored here, the iodine or the chromium? Iodine. That's right. So what does that tell us? Um, that tells us uh, that the iodine wants to be reduced. So should um, we put the iodine at the anode or at the cathode? Cathode. 
All right, so we just figured out which reaction is happening here. I think that was one of the questions. Assign a half reaction to each beaker. We just figured out that this is the reaction that should happen at the cathode. So you can see you have to do this step by step. First, find the anode in the cathode. Then find where oxidation and reduction is happening. Then figure out who wants to be oxidized and who wants to be reduced. So the reaction here is, so should I write the reaction like this, or should I write the reverse reaction over here? As it is. As it is, because we want a reduction. Very well. Uh, therefore, we know that the chromium must be over here. Since this has a negative reduction potential, it must favor being oxidized. So what half reaction should I write over here? Um, chromium, but opposite. That's right. Because this is a reduction, and what we're going to have is an oxidation. So I should reverse the reaction. Now, what should I write as the E for this reaction? Well, that depends on whether I want to keep it at the reduction potential here is still negative 0.41. But for me, it would be more intuitive to write the oxidation potential, because we're doing an oxidation. Well, what do you think is the oxidation potential over here? It's opposite, so 0.4. Yeah, positive 0.41. Not, not all instructors do that. Some instructors like to just use reduction potentials all the time. But I find that confusing, because this isn't a reduction. So, I'll, uh, but I'm going to put in ox here to remind myself that this is the oxidation potential. Maybe I'll put in RED to remind myself this is the reduction potential over here. So we've assigned the half reactions. Uh, we have to figure out the direction of electron flow. All right, well, um, should the electrons flow towards the anode or towards the cathode? cathode. That's right, how do you know? Reduce. Yeah, something here has to gain electrons. So the electrons have to come from someplace. And notice, something here has to lose electrons. Um, so the electrons, the chromium here is losing electrons and dumping them into the wire. And then the electrons move through the wire over here, where they can be gained by the iodine. In fact, though, we, didn't have, we could have done this before doing all this work. As soon as we knew that this is where oxidation is happening, and this is where reduction is happening, we could already have shown the flow of electrons. We don't need to know the precise reactions. So do electrons flow towards cathodes or anodes? Always towards cathodes, no exceptions, because the cathode is where electrons are being gained. So new electrons have to always show up to be gained there. And the anode is always where electrons are being lost, and they get dumped into the wire over there. So that answers that part of the question, to show the direction of electron flow. All right, and then we have to show the direction of salt flow. So they've connected these with a salt bridge. It's made of potassium and chloride. Uh, so what direction is the potassium going to move in? Towards the cathode or towards the anode? Cathode? Yeah, and this here we just used what you said earlier. Cations move towards cathodes, and anions move towards anodes. Um, that's always true as well. I think in this case they told us that it was made out of uh, aqueous solution of potassium chloride. Can they tell us that? Yeah, so if you look at the problem, it's pretty small type, but that looks like aqueous solution of potassium oh, chloride. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, why is that called a salt? Remember that a salt is basically just an ionic compound. Salt is basically just a synonym for an ionic compound. So here we have a dissolved salt. A dissolved ionic compound. Because it's dissolved, the ions can move in either direction. Um, we can explain why this is a little bit more. Um, remember that electrons are moving into here. So this would tend to become more and more negative. Um, well, that pulls these positives in. So that kind of explains why cations move towards the cathode. And by the same token, since electrons are leaving this beaker, it would tend to become more and more uh, positive unless that was balanced by these chlorides. So this whole, uh, this is what's called a galvanic cell, right? A cell that's supposed to work by itself with no outside power source is a galvanic cell. Um, what, what, what's the use of this? Well, as the electrons move from here to here, we can harness their energy to run an appliance. This is some appliance. For example, this might be a light bulb, and it can use the energy of the electrons that are going through to power the light bulb. 
Um, so basically, this is a battery. This is showing how we can use a battery. But the battery would run to a halt if we allowed charge to build up. Because if, this, if we allowed this to become more and more negative, that would repel more electrons from coming. And if we allowed this to become more and more positive, that would pull the electrons back. So we have to put in the salt bridge to cancel out the charges that we're creating. So without the salt bridge, this would only run for a millisecond before grinding to a halt because we'd be generating charges in these two places. The purpose of putting this ionic compound here is so that we can keep balancing out the charges that are being, uh, that are being created. 